So the display shelves are finished. The retail space is basically 60-70% done. Um, what's missing is a display table in the middle, a point of sales counter, and that's it really. And there's just plants and decoration and more like styling things. Um, the lighting's done, the cabinetry's done, the window's been cleaned. Um, as soon as we go back to fix it up a bit. Um, and most importantly, so today is the 10th of April 2021. And this weekend is our first opening weekend for our studio members. And today, later um, at lunchtime, we actually have a meet and greet of all our members um, that can make it today. Uh, I think that's going to be really exciting. Yesterday we had a few people come in uh, and it was really cool just to have people talking about clays and even the interaction between members who have only just met each other for the first time would be so into like conversation of just pottery and the space and everything like that. And we also had to do an impromptu kind of uh, photo shoot yesterday for the revival timber structures, um, both the facade and that. So I just got, or I just asked on our Slack channel, be like, oh, if anyone's interested, please bring in some finished work. Um, we'll style the place to make it look a bit more lively because a bare shelf doesn't look that great on photos. And it would just, yeah, it was just making a lot more sense. Um, so all that's going to get featured in the magazine down the line about sustainability um, called, I think, Green Magazine. I'm not sure exactly, <laughs> but um, I just want to show what this looks like finish and how in context to the rest of the space um, it's going to fit in. So, so much wider feeling. Like, basically, as you walk in, um, door is about here. So you walk in, there'll be a table here. And I guess ideally I want people to walk this way, like to the left side, because this is the better side. And they can like check out a few things, look at all the features, move along to here, and then probably have a look at all this finished work as well as checking out the studio. Because you can kind of get a sense of what's going on here. Um, but because of this structure, it's quite nice because then you're not, you're not entirely focused on the people at the back. Um, there is still a plan to get a curtain for behind this shelf. That way we can get some privacy if we're doing like specific workshops or we, it just gets a bit too rowdy um, on the weekend, we might just close that off. But for now it acts as a pretty good physical divider of the space and also like aesthetically it really separates the retail space and the studio space. Um, let's go have a look closer. So this is most likely what the first thing you're going to see as you walk into this space, um, it, especially in person on camera right now, because of the perspective, you don't. It feels small, but it's it's a, it's a massive structure. Like, just for reference, this is about 1.7 meters, so I, I could get the workbench in and out of here quite easily. And it's a really like just generous, inviting kind of entryway. Um, and it's really nice to be able to just like walk through here and then you're part of this studio space. And then back here, you know, you can see that, you can see through it for sure, like it's not a solid wall, but it just gives a bit of that sense of separation. So I really like it, like, yeah. It's, it's kind of hard to show on camera. And today I'm just doing this as an update because of the launch. I'll do a proper tour video of the whole space. Um, and probably do a bit of like throwing just to show you like how the space works. Like I, f I filmed it a while ago, but the audio didn't work. So had to trash all that. So this is our front. Nice main road with lots of traffic. And then on this side we have where I've hidden the switchboard. Um, and then that's gonna be a bit of work over there as well. So point of sales is gonna go into this corner. Oh, and we also have plants. <laughs> um, it just helps so much. Like, as soon as the plant went in, it just felt so much more alive because there's more organic shape. It's not all just straight lines and right angles. But, so the point of sales is probably gonna come up to this point and then come out about maybe a meter and a half. And there'll be a little countertop. So whoever's working retail will be mostly in this space. 
Um, so this is where our coffee machine is going to go. Just a little batch brew machine, like a mocha master that you can reach from both sides. And I've already got the tray and that's going to have all the mugs and cups and stuff and a bit of, you know, coffee related stuff. Maybe some cookies, I don't know. Um, but because I'm going to be spending like seven days here, I'll be drinking a lot of coffee if it's right there. But anyway, um, so yeah, retail space, we're thinking about a little feature for this wall, maybe just like a test tile kind of um, wall feature, or we could do a bit of branding, we could do a bit of like logo on top. Um, it's, a, it's just, yeah, just something to make it a bit more interesting. But for now, we'll get a point of sales here. Um, and then this will mostly be displayed, but also like not as accessible from the public. Um, that's why we've got the coffee machine there and also just, um, just general stuff. A lot of stuff's gonna get hidden under the countertop, like the printers and the f posts and the phones and all that kind of ugly stuff. Um, but it might be nice just have like a bit of stationery or something that, you know, people might need a pen quickly from the inside. They can just come and grab that. So in the last video, we talked about the doors, right? Like, do I put a handle on it? Do I cut out a groove? Do I um, put in a push and push to open system? And the conclusion is, and also a lot, of, a lot of you guys commented the same thing, basically, if you put a handle on it, customer might start opening things, expecting to see products in it, and it's just gonna be a mess. Um, so what I was gonna do is leave it blank, and when I open it, I can just go, that's not a good example, I need to fix that door. So when I level this, this is now touching, um, so I just need to adjust the hinge. So take two. So you can always just come in and then do that. And then for example, a bit of a mess in there. Uh, but at least now we still have the soft closing feature, which is really nice. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be a main issue. Like we're not going through those um, cabinets that often. So for now, we're just gonna leave it. I don't think I've shown the lighting, have I? I don't think I have. You might have already seen some of this, but... So I've put in a track light system for the retail space. Look how nice the ceiling is. Basically, it runs in a square. Um, I can't show the whole thing right now because my lens is not wide enough, but you know, it's connected into a square, so it's just one big circuit. Um, it's all dimmable and... So we can move them around, easily adjustable. That's why I really like the track light for the retail space because then we can get spotlights onto the items um, and just a bit more focus. Like we don't need the light spilling all over the, you know, the place. Um, and it's easy to add more lights as we need. So we can also use them for the window display because it runs all the way towards the windows. And for the studio, and just we've got three fairly big, they're 600 mils. Um, pendants. They are quite bright, especially when it's not sunny like right now. Um, it's definitely more than enough working light. The only issue is when the sun is out, it actually makes the room feel a bit more moody. And because the lighting is quite directional, um, it doesn't really hit the corners of the room, especially the top and the ceiling. Um, so what happens is it's bright here, but then the ceiling and the corner feels dark and then it gives this moody feeling. Um, so we can fix that by adding a couple more lights here and there, just as a general like flush bounce light. Um, maybe like a floor lamp that points up to the ceiling or above the timber structure, we can put the strip light that also bounces off the ceiling and then comes back down. Um, and the only issue is because that corner is like the furthest away from the window, it just doesn't get much light. So maybe there could be a bit more supplementary lighting just to, again, wash over to the ceiling and just to lift the whole kind of freshness. Um, it's not a major issue when it's dark, especially at night, this is really bright. But during the day, it just, it's that ratio between the ambient light and the artificial light inside. Um, so yeah, so that's just little things to work on, but at least we've got this all in and they're all control. Ooh. So they've all got little smart modules connected to the power. Um, that way you can change any lighting into a smart lighting. And basically I want to make it as easy as possible. I'm still trying to figure out how I can link the security system to the smart home system. That way when the security is disarmed, the lighting automatically changed. For now you have to manually do it, but it's quite easy. So. When you 
usually when you lock up, you just go locking up. And like I said, I want the space to still be lit, especially the front. That way during the evening when people are walking by, they can just window shop a little bit and just look inside. And actually you can see quite well, um, even with the timber shelf where it's quite far, you can still see the work pretty well. And I think once we've got window displays and the display table, um, you can spend a lot of time just window shopping from the outside. Um, so you see the back, we still keep the lights on, but dim to a very low level, um, just as a little background, which looks kind of nice when it's nighttime. Um, so when people arrive at the studio, all they have to press is arriving, and then all the light just comes up to the full 100% brightness, and that's it. Um, no light switch. I'm also setting up, a, I guess, Alexa or Google, I don't know what. I think we have a, we have a MS, uh, Echo Dot that was a gift, so I might just put that in. And especially when, you, you know, when you're throwing, your hands are dirty, it might just be easier to use like voice commands. Although I don't see, oh, I guess for Spotify and stuff, it will be handy. Um, so you can like skip songs and change playlists without physically trying to like tap with um, clay hands. Oh, I forgot to talk about the kiln. All right. I'm so relieved. So this came, this came on Wednesday. Today is Saturday um, and we launched this weekend. So it was, if anything had happened, if the kiln fell off the truck, um, we would have been screwed. But luckily the guys who delivered to us did a really good job, got it in, installed it for me. And now we have a kiln. Yeah, like as when the kiln got in and then we turned it on and it works, I think that sense of relief, I was, because I, I, I think I subconsciously I've been stressing out about, okay, this is like one thing I couldn't control because we can't buy a brand new kiln right away because it takes like four months of lead time because there's just not enough supplies here in Australia um, to import a kiln, which is what we're doing with the road kiln. We order it in December and it will get here around May. So if we had to do that, that means that's another, what, three, four months delay. It would have just been a nightmare. And yeah, with rent and all that, it doesn't make sense to have members in when the kilns doesn't work. Cause it's like, you can throw here, then how are you going to fire stuff? And it's just, it's just not a good start to the business. Um, so even if it's just one kiln, I think that's more than enough to get us started. Um, it will tie us over till the road gets here. Then we'll have two kilns running and it will just make life a lot easier. And before anyone asks, no, we're not offering firing service to general public just because we don't know the amount of work that's going to come through here from our members. Um, once after a few months, we get a better sense of, okay, maybe the kiln's not being used as much as we thought they will be. We can start hiring it out for other people to use. Um, but at this stage, we don't plan to yet. Um, so it's an older kiln. It's a Tetlo, which is an Australia brand. So this is a rental right now. We potentially could buy it. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out if this is what we want. So it's quite a simple kiln. The controller only has one thermocouple. So it's a sink, like it doesn't have a multi-zone system where the, so, okay. I'm just going to go through a bit of detail. So originally we had the other kiln that was going to come to us, but that controller had issues. So that kiln no longer can be sold. So this is our, this was the backup plan. Um, it's a bit bigger. This is a 300 liters. Originally we were, we were going to get a 250 liters. Um, so we get a bit more space, but we lose a bit of feature in terms of, because originally we we're going to get the Ballet uh, Genesis controllers, which has, you know, that, app where you can monitor your firing remotely, you have multi zones, um, so it's like an even heating throughout the whole kiln where this, you know, the bottom was probably going to get a little bit cooler, so we have to pack the kiln in a way that the bottom can receive more heat, so a bit more airflow, and also lifting the furniture up just a touch, that way the bottom element can bring the heat below um, the very bottom shelf. So little things like that, just to be aware of. So we'll use this for a few months, see what it's like. If we like it, we'll buy it. If we don't, we can order something in. And until the new kiln gets here, we can just keep this one on rental. So it gives us a little bit more flexibility um, and just make sure that we have a kiln. Like I, this is the reason this whole business started. It's because I wanted a kiln, not, not this big, but I wanted a kiln for myself. And somehow that idea became 1280. But 
it's really weird to think about it. I mean, it feels like it's been forever till we got to this point. I mean, four months basically. I've, um, four months since we got the keys and we've transformed the place, made it into something that's operational. It's still not done, obviously. Like the back area is trash. The retail still need work. Um, but we can have people in doing stuff without the space feeling like it was put together in a rush. Like the space just feels very workable and that's why it's really good. We couldn't do our first firing on Monday. We've already done the test fire because um, the elements are brand new just to get that um, oxidation of coating onto the element which protects it. Uh, but yeah, so the first proper firing with work will be on Monday, which is in two days. Um, we've got a fair bit of work. Jack's got a fair bit of work he's been working on. Um, I'll be throwing a lot this weekend, but I don't think they'll dry quick enough for Monday. But our plan right now is to run the kiln Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, probably one, uh, one bis fire and two glaze fire. Um, just because with bis firing, you can pack a lot more stuff. One week later, I'll do an update. But I'm just, I'm just so excited. I can, this will be the first time I get to fire my own work. I'm not taking it to a studio. I'm not letting someone else do it. I will do it. Well, Jack will do it and I'll help. That's it. We are at, I would call this our starting point of the business. It's the, not the end of the renovation, obviously, but um, we are getting an income. You know, we have people paying rent. We have people buying supplies, people using the kiln. Well, we will be. Um, hopefully after today and people, I think some people will come in this morning before our meet and greet, which would be nice. Uh, yeah, I, I'm rambling. I, I'm just, I don't know, maybe it doesn't seem it, but I'm quite, <laughs> I'm quite excited about it. It's just more like, just happy. Like seeing people working in our space and posting it on Instagram and just, no one's had to complain anything yet, which is good, but we, you know, it's a growing business. It's also, everything's, we're kind of still winging it. So a lot of the equipment, for example, like do I need a slap roller? I don't know. We'll see what our members say. It's like if there's a demand for it, we'll get it. But we don't want to buy things and then no one use it. It's kind of a waste. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to stop because I need to go tidy up and make sure the space is ready and also the front door's unlocked and I should really be keeping an eye on it. And I'm going to do some throwing just because I'm going to take a break from construction. I know there's still a lot of work to be done over the place but for this weekend at least and maybe some of the week I'm just going to make stuff because I have to or else I won't be able to get a sense of how the space is working and also just for my like mental health I need to like making is the reason why I'm doing this whole business so let's not get too focused on the construction stuff because we've done that for four months already and it's about time we take a small break and then I can get back to it and do things a bit in a slower pace. Like there's no, not as much pressure to get things done right away now that we can start selling and we can start doing stuff. And we might launch the online store first. That way, even though the retail space is not fully stocked, we can still sell in a smaller quantity and just get some income going for our members as well. Uh, yeah, okay, bye.